Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts. Charter Communications and Charter TV3 proudly present live coverage of NCAA men's basketball. Tonight, it is a big New Mac battle. It is also a big city clash. It is Clark and WPI. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the gymnasium. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells. And Kevin, WPI has been the gold standard in the New Mac for the last 15 years. Clark's record this year isn't where they'd like it to be, but they are a tough and talented team. If you look at their losses, they're all usually very close games, and they're playing a lot of young kids. On top of that, WPI, I know that three of their wins came as buzzer beaters, so tonight's matchup is a real key. It's more than just being across Park Avenue. It's two coaches that have been together and fought against each other for the last 17 years. Throw out the records, it really doesn't matter. The last time these two teams matched up, it was a 13-point loss for Clark, but now they have the home court advantage, so I expect a great matchup tonight. All right, it is Clark and WPI men's basketball. We're back with the opening tip-off right after this. We're proud to lead with high school sports stories because we know that's important to our viewers, that's important to our communities. I think it's incredibly unique because you just don't see this amount of coverage other places. We can do five and six minutes at 10 o'clock, whereas other stations might do two and a half minutes, and of that, 30 seconds is on high school sports. It's very easy to be enthusiastic watching these guys play, whether it's high school football or field hockey or lacrosse. When you see somebody make an outstanding play, you're kind of fired up about that. I come back and I'm like, Kev, I, I couldn't believe this play I saw in this game. And to see and to kind of be able to capture some of those magic moments. When you're there to witness history, that's really cool. We're out there every day shooting the games ourselves and coming back and editing it and writing it ourselves. Well, you get a certain insight that you don't get if you're, saying a press box. We never forget the players that come from Central Mass, those that are lucky enough to play professional sports. We follow them in the pros. We never forget those guys coming from Central Mass. I've had people come up and say to me that, you know, we still watch and we're still fans because they can watch on TV. Has it brought fans to the game? Has it impacted local sports? I hope so. Coaches tell us it has. Certainly our goal is just to, just to cover the game and to really highlight the positive of, of high school and, and local college sports. And we're enjoying what we do, and that I hope that comes across. There's no other place I'd rather be, and there's no other job I'd rather do. I know everybody uh, agrees with me that it's wonderful to see construction cranes in Worcester. We've got buildings going up, the colleges are all building, things are happening in Worcester. On uh, Chronicles, we hope to be talking about all the issues that affect Worcester. There's a lot of development going on, a lot of interesting politics, always our share of scandal and whatnot, and uh, we hope to have a lively uh, repartee. Very interesting, lots going on, and uh, we want you to tune in and watch us talk about it. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. And welcome back, everyone, to the Neller Center on the campus of Clark University. So Clark looking for their first win in New Mac play this season. As we mentioned, though, in the open, this is a team that kind of has been snake-bitten. Their losses have all been really, really close games, including even, you know, deceptively, the two teams played nine days ago, and WPI won that game. But uh, talking with WPI assistant Brian Riley, and he said it was, it was a lot closer than the score would indicate. It was an 85-72 win for WPI, but he said it was a lot closer than that. Now, making things a little more difficult for Clark is Luca McCormick. Their leading scorer and starter at 17 and a half points a game is injured. He is out of the game tonight. So Anthony Gremsky, a lot of freshmen in there. Biko Gaiman, Anthony Gremsky, Tyler Davern, all three freshman starters. John Pissacretta, the senior. And now you'll look at WPI. Chris Rogers, 
Dave Zielinski, and they have a couple freshmen in there too. Reed Walker, Jake Wisniewski, the former Quaybog standout, and Aaron Todd, the big man in the middle for WPI. And we'll see a lot. There's Chris Bartley. Boy, has he had some tremendous success throughout his career at WPI. I mean, just you talk about 20 win uh, seasons and how they've been doing that on a consistent basis. It is incredible. And Paul Phillips, the dean of coaches here in Central Mass, and uh, has done a sensational job with Clark. Two stints at Clark. Of course, had a great run at Anna Maria as well. But the uh, just the, the way that WPI, nine of the last 14 years, they have won outright or shared the new MAC championship. 13 of the last 14 seasons, WPI has won 20 or more games. Chris Bartley eclipsed the 300 win plateau last season. Kevin, the engineers, the year before Chris Bartley got here, they ended up zero wins and 20 losses. And he thus far has accumulated 323 wins and 129 losses. You know, over a 700 winning percentage. So just to show you what he's done, during his 17-year career. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, it's incredible. Clark wins the opening tip-off, and they have the ball. They go down low, up and in. Adam Converse, whose brother, Ian Converse, was a sensational player for WPI. He was an all-league performer. Woodstock boys just over the border in Connecticut. Both were outstanding, are outstanding players. Reed Walker up and in, and we are tied up early on. Well, again, Walker, only a freshman. He's from Florida. Great job getting to the basket, and then a left-handed reverse layup. And here's, there's a steal. Up and in. Zielinski. Dave Zielinski. Some of the young guns. Yeah, graduate of Fairfield Prep down in Connecticut. Great basketball pedigree. Yeah, we'll see Garrett Stevenson for WPI as well from Townsend, Mass. But he went to prep school too, went to St. Bernard's for like a year, then went to prep. So here's Walker, kicks it back out. Turn around, nothing but net for Wisniewski. Jake Wisniewski, a phenomenal athlete out of Quaybog. After he left Quaybog, he went to Williston, Northampton uh, to prep school. And then, of course, uh, here he is. Biko Gaiman tickling the twine. Well, and this is something, Kevin, you talked about. We're going to see an awful lot. This is a freshman-laden ball game. A lot of freshmen uh, that have been playing very well for both teams. Yeah, you're talking about. And at this point of the season, too, Kevin, we're three quarters of the way through the season. Converse with the rebound. They're not freshmen anymore. You know, now they've, they've played and they've gotten used to the demands. And there's a three from Gremsky. Anthony Gremsky did that all career long at Bartlett High School with the threes. And Clark has a one point lead with Gremsky's latest three. Here's Walker for three. Gremsky the rebound. Well, with Anthony Gremsky, you know, he's at 5'7, but if you give him daylight, and I'm saying daylight being 25 feet and in, he's going to really hurt you. Going hard to the rack, and Clark has a three-point lead. John Pisacreta, one of the leaders, one of the elder statesmen for this Clark team. We talk about all the young kids. Pisacreta, the senior from Andover, six-foot guard, left-handed layup, and it's a 9-6 advantage for the Cougars. WPI trying to go inside Converse, and Brian Riley had a lot of praise for Converse in his game. Adam Converse, he said he's an energy guy. He does all the things that, you know, they're not going to show up and get you the headlines or the fancy highlights, but he's going to be the one that gets the rebound, sets the screens, plays great defense. Very, very smart basketball player. Yeah, you need players like him. The jump hook looks a little like Bill Walton did in the 70s when Walton broke into the NBA, doesn't he? Uh, absolutely. He's rocking the beard. He's got a little bit of the uh, the headband going. Sure. Walton had that whole look going with was it the Bucks. Offensive rebound, Wisniewski. Wisniewski one of the top offensive rebounders in the new Mac. And it is Reed Walker with his second field goal of the night, and it's back to a one-point game. Another freshman, Reed Walker, gonna be crucial for 
Clark, in order to maintain the competitiveness of tonight's ball game, they're gonna have to do a better job of boxing out on the defensive end. They cannot allow WPI to get offensive putbacks or looks. Damon, six foot freshman. Good quickness, looking for some space. Rogers, outstanding defense. Chris, Chris Rogers, the senior from Franklin now. He played in the district championship his senior year. They lost to St. John's at WPI. That game was played, of course, at the Harrington Auditorium at WPI, and then Franklin played all his home college games there. There he is, Rogers, rather, from Franklin. And uh, Franklin, again, one of the top teams in the state this year, and they'll play in the Central Mass Districts. But Chris Rogers had a buzzer beater against Emerson two games ago to help WPI with the win. And a couple years ago, he did it against Clark. He hit a jumper with .4 seconds remaining to beat Clark two years ago. So the game started out, Kev, pretty whistle-free, almost like a, like a playground game. It was up and down. Uh, we, uh, we went almost five minutes without a whistle. We've gotten two in the last 30 seconds, both justifiable, but uh, just one of those games. And we have a pretty good pace going here. You know, 9-9 nine, nine ball game, both coaches. Uh, I, I see that uh, Coach Phillips still has his jacket on, which yep. is a good sign for the Cougars. That's, it's a good sign for the officials. Uh, well, that too. Lou Doherty knocks them both down. Doherty, a spy ponder from Arlington. His father, a former standout Linebacker for Bentley College. Paul Phillips has done a sensational job throughout the years with these players at Clark University. And you know, and you, you look at all the community service that teams do. And I've said this before, but he was the first one when I came here in 1997. Paul Phillips was doing a thing with one of the local elementary schools uh, with reading. Reading is cool, and he and he would take his players over. Once a week, they would practice at 6 in the morning, then they'd all walk over as a team to the elementary school, and they would all help in the classes and do a thing to promote reading and make it seem like it was a cool thing for the kids. And he was doing that well before it became fashionable well, to and, do it. And Chris Bartley uh, it does the same. In 2008, oh, Chris uh, got the Denise Nicoletti Trustees Award for service to the community. Uh, and his kids. So we're talking two programs, yep. great athletes, outstanding students that really put a lot of time back into the young kids of the city of Worcester. Chris Bartley's on the board of directors for the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, uh, and he has gotten so many different teams and student athletes and students involved at WPI in the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. The whole WPI team is involved with the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. The women's team is involved, several other teams at WPI involved, but that's all due to Chris Bartley and his involvement with the Big Brothers Big Sisters program uh, here in central Massachusetts in Worcester. So it is, it's a tip of the hat to all the stuff that, that is done off the court that, you know, in the real world, you know, when these guys graduate, they're all gonna be, get jobs and, you know, most of them probably have families of their own someday and that makes them better people. You know, everyone talks about that in society now. How are we going to be a better society? How are we going to be better people? Well, that's what these guys are teaching them. You know, Kevin, it's not always, you know, people in, from the outside, whether they're uh, alums or, or even administrators, sometimes can get caught up with the wins and losses aspect. Well, are we winning enough games? Are we that? Well, who are you? What, what kind of men are you graduating? You know, are, they, are you graduating people that have a love of community service and, and see what a difference you can make, a positive difference. You know, and that's what both of these coaches do a phenomenal job with. Just a phenomenal job. They both want to win, and they're going to fight tooth and nail to win every single game that they play. But long after these guys graduate, there's a big shot of three from Pisacreta. Kevin. Clark with a two-point lead. Long after they graduate, Kev, you know this, as an administrator, school administrator, it's what kind of people did they develop? Well, and, and uh, first and foremost, they, they try to recruit kids that are good kids, you know, and kids that are hard-nosed. And when I say hard-nosed, you're seeing two teams go at it man-to-man, -man, great man-to-man -man defense. You know, they're always seeing the ball on a weak side. They're just doing an outstanding job here in the early going. Andreas Bitsos from Greece. With the three. Oh, the sophomore knocks it down. And WPI has a one point lead. Beatsos, the second international player that Chris Bartley has 
gotten at WPI for the Boynton Hillers. Vitsos is going to do his project. They, all of these senior projects they do, which are phenomenal, but he's actually going to Australia to do his project. And there is Stevenson, Garrett Stevenson, the kid from Townsend, Massachusetts, who is a phenomenal player. Just a freshman, but 6'7". Yeah. He's, you know, some of the coaches believe the best low post player in the league right now as a freshman. Well, not only is he 6'7", you know, he is, he's very strong, he's thick. He's very smart when he gets the ball in the low post and he's got a nice soft touch as well fourth leading scorer on the team for WPI. WPI has one player that averages in double figures, so it's it's been a team effort each and every game. Well, what's interesting is, you're absolutely correct, Reed Walker is averaging 6.1 points per game. However, Biko Gaiman and Chris Rogers, I'm sorry, Chris Rogers also is one of the assist leaders in the greater Worcester area with 3.4 assists per game. Yeah, he's an unselfish player, and then that's your leader. You know, your seniors, you want them to lead by example. Down low, Converse, great up fake off the window for two, and Clark's got a one-point lead. So this has been a great seesaw battle so far. Again, what we expected and what we hoped for. Fundamental, fundamental. Converse just doing a nice job, a nice pick and roll. They dump it into Converse in the low post. Shot fakes, gets the defender off his feet. And then There's take a look at it right here. You know, here's Gramsci. Okay, Great that pass. was a slip, so it was a pick and, it was supposed to be a pick and roll, but it was a pick and slip, and it was an outstanding bullet pass. Oh, back door. Ooh. Walker on the reverse, can't get it. Converse is there. Gramsci looks up quickly, and Clark's on the run, and Pisacreta will go to the line and shoot two. Oh, well, Kevin, I gotta tell you, that's, that's experience. Let's take a look at it in your living room. You know, here's the miss. Rebound by Converse, off to Gremski, immediately up the court. And there's the experience, big number 11. John Pisacreta, the senior, takes it off the bounce, gets the defender moving, goes hard to the basket. Pisacreta averaging 11 points a game. Clark's been scoring. I mean, they're, they have been shooting and scoring all season long, averaging 76 points a game. Yeah, nice move. Pisacreta. Draws the foul, he'll so go to the line, a 78% free throw shooter. Yeah, here's the penetration. Last minute, a little bit of shuffling of the feet. So he'll get two with the charity stripe. You know, what's really hurting uh, Clark tonight, when, not so far, obviously, with the score, uh, but they're without, I think you had mentioned it, Luca McCormick. Yeah, yeah 17 and a half points a game. Luca McCormick, you know, the leading scorer on this team, one of the leading scorers in the new Mac. As you see, Chris Rogers, the senior from Franklin, checking back into the ball game for WPI. Rogers at 12 points a game, the leading scorer for the Engineers. But as you mentioned, uh, tremendous with his assists as well. He's right there, the tops. Well, so the question is with McCormick, who's going to step up and who's going to put in the extra points? And we're all knotted up. Lou Doherty hits a three, and we're tied up at 16. 11.52 to play in the first half. This has been an entertaining half of basketball, and it's been a back and forth battle. These two teams separated by about a mile down Park Ave. Pisacreta elevates, and a big rebound by Wisniewski. You know, Kevin, Pisacreta has such an incredible crossover with an amazing quick step. He just beats you off the bounce. Wisniewski, the elbow jumper, his second field goal tonight, gives WPI a two point advantage. We got a timeout on the floor. Jake Wisniewski played for Quaybog, then went to prep school. Played in the Clark tournament here when he was in high school. Well, let's take a look at him here. Jake gets the ball just inside the free throw line. Little stop and pop. Nice follow through. Again, Walker with the assist here. Nice pass back, and then Walker goes right in to get himself into position, but nothing to miss there. WPI, Chris Bartley calls a timeout. Maybe he's gonna turn things up a little bit with some different pressure to length of the floor. It'll be Clark Ball, down by two, 18-16. Boy, the, uh, we talked about it, but the success that 
Chris Bartley has led uh, WPI to is just just incredible during his time here. And, it, you know, we mentioned 13 out of the last 14 years to have 20 win seasons is just incredible. Already, you know, over 300 wins in his career, over 320 wins in his career. And, and the gold standard, I mean, these two teams, the New Mac's been around. Pisacreta for three. New Mac's been around. 19. Yeah, for 19 years. And 13 times in that 19-year history, either Clark or WPI has won outright or shared the NUMAC title. Well, again, that's a tribute to two universities in the city of Worcester, and more importantly, two coaches that have groomed fine young men and outstanding basketball players. How about WPI? I don't know if you mentioned it. Uh, Five of the last seven years, they've gone to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's it's incredible, and they've become the gold standard in the new Mac. And, and you know what? And you see teams now, and you see schools doing a lot to, to try to elevate their programs. Wisniewski, the turnaround from the free throw line. Offensive uh, rebound, count the basket. Aaron Todd. Todd will have a chance for a three-point play. And see, Luca McCormick, leading rebounder on this Clark team, too. That's where you're going to... You're going to feel a little bit of that sting as well, losing the starter who leads you in rebounds and points. Well, Aaron Todd, a senior, 6'6", from York, Maine, with a big offensive rebound and putback. And we mentioned the fact that Clark is going to have to pride themselves on boxing out and only allowing one shot for WPI. Davern with the rebound. But I was starting to say, that now all these schools now in the new map really turning it up because, you know, WPI has had this tremendous run. So now... School's saying, hey, hey, what do we need to do to help elevate our program? Two years ago, Babson wins the national title. Springfield this year is phenomenal. They are absolutely, they have a, a basketball player, a kid on their team who's a Division I basketball player. He got scholarship offers, but he wanted to play two sports. Gaiman's three off the mark. He wanted to play two sports in college. He wanted to play baseball and basketball. Springfield said, sure, come on and do it. And then he did it for his freshman year, and then he said, ah, I'll just play basketball from here on out. But he is... He's outstanding. Babson's outstanding. MIT is always good. You know, they put a lot of resources behind these programs, a lot of support behind the programs to make them as good as they are. You, and that's what, I've talked about this before, but you need institutional support. It can't be one or two people advocating. You need institutional support well, uh, and, to be and good. And one of the things, Kevin, especially uh, here in, in New England, is that... You have Division I, Division II, and Division III. Unfortunately, there are a boatload of Division I, II talents that don't get a one. They don't even get a D Division II scholarship because there's not many D2 schools. No, you're right. Wisniewski, the steal and the leaner, and WPI has their largest lead of the ball game. It is a six-point advantage for Tech. 9.58 to play. Here's Wisniewski. Well, again, kind of a, a lob inbound, big steal, and a great basket. Wisniewski, you know, nose for the ball. Yep. And uh, just doing a great job. So as I was saying, you know, there's not that many Division II schools. So there's so many scholarship potential players that are not really have their eyes set on Division III, but they end up going Division III because there's only so many scholarships available in Division II. Yeah, you're so right. So the level of talent to play in college basketball today is so much stronger than it was at one time. No, you're right. And, and, and as you said, in the, whole, the way that uh, the scouting is done now, it's, you looked at Mike Burles there. The Colonel. He's the best. He is. Tyrone Hicks. He is outstanding. Tyrone Hicks is phenomenal, and he's been a part of this program for years, Tyrone Hicks. Long look at the three. Kremski could have packed a lunch. He set himself, set himself again, and drilled it and makes it a three-point game. Well, Kremski's a sniper if you give him an open shot. Lou Doherty, the freshman, comes right back, sticks another three. He's got eight points, and the lead is back to six. But, uh, you know, you mentioned Tyrone Hicks, and we saw Mike Burles, the two of them in the shot there and they have done a phenomenal job with coach Paul Phillips here for years at Clark University. Gramps, Mike Burles has been with them at Anna Maria and at Clark. And of course we're personal friends with all of them and yep. 
you know, they're just great guys. Oh, they are. They're fantastic. Fan first and foremost, fantastic guys first. Tyrone and Hicks, I know that you didn't know this until the pregame, but uh, I had seen Tyrone up at Western New England College this fall. Uh, he has a new passion, and he is, uh, there he is. He's the head coach of one of the Special Olympic teams here out of the city of Worcester that for flag football. So it's his third year. He said, I don't know how to do this. Uh, so he looked at YouTube and uh, he got videos and uh, he just absolutely loves it. His son is sitting on the end of the Clark bench and is uh, a real Clark Cougar fan. Yeah, and they got to play at Gillette Stadium. His team went all the way to the championship. He led them to the championship. How's that for coaching? And uh, they got to play at Gillette Stadium. Fantastic. He Great. said, yeah, he's doing the other thing. He's covering his mouth when he's calling the plays. He was joking. He right. is, he's such a good guy. Doesn't want anybody stealing his signals. Yeah, exactly. You know, Steve Spagnola. Yep. We learned <laughs> that from the Belichick Spagnola. Right. And Josh McDaniels. You know. WPI, just tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Wisniewski gets a hand on it to flex it out of bounds. It was intended for Converse. It's a big trip right now for Clark. We're looking at eight and a half to go. You're right. You know, they really can use a bucket right here. Gremski, the 5 7 freshman from Webster and Bartlett. Three out of the five players on the floor are freshmen for Clark. And Great defense. Oh, here's Gaiman. Two on the shot clock. Gremski gets it off in time. Didn't no hit the rim. iron. Yep, no rim. So that's just good defense from WPI. Stout defense. 8 15 to play. Pico Gaiman will check out for Clark as he gets a rest. Kyle Coughlin comes into the ball game for the Cougars, the sophomore from Beverly, Mass. Beverly Panthers. WPI going around, looking inside to Garrett Stevenson. Nice patience. Here's Bitsos. Step back, Rogers drills it. Well, again, Chris Rogers, one of the uh, averaging 12 a game, so you know you've got to play him. You can't give him any freebies. He's a tough player. Deverne, only a freshman for Clark. He and Gremski both played together at Barlow High School, and they really wanted to go to college together, and here they are. They go from the Indians to the Cougars. Pizzos. Rogers with a three. Back to back buckets for Chris Rogers. Five points for him. Largest lead of the ball game for WPI. An 11 point advantage. Clark wants a timeout. They will talk things over. We'll take a timeout here at the Neller Center and be back with plenty more right after this. If you feel like you're getting knocked around by the big insurance company, Call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Whether it's a car accident, slip and fall, or dog bite, don't sign anything from the insurance company until you've talked to a lawyer. Hiring a lawyer can double or even triple the initial settlement offer. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Let the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia fight for you. Coming up for Clark, at Babson, and again, we mentioned Babson two years ago, national champs. I mean, they are phenomenal at Emerson. Emerson lost at the buzzer to WPI. Rogers hit a shot at the buzzer, then Coast Guard, MIT, one of the nationally ranked teams, and Wheaton. Wheaton always a tough game, so no easy games for the Clark Cougars. None of the games in the new Mac are, and talking to, to Brian Riley about that, just how this conference has elevated its play and how tough the conference is. And we want to say congratulations to Brian and his wife. They just had their second daughter was born last Thursday. Ella was born less than a week ago. So is her older sister, Penelope, excited to have a new teammate. And there's Brian Riley, phenomenal player at Wachusett and at Nichols College. Former coach at Marlboro High School, had tremendous success at Marlboro. BR is such a great guy. He was a great athlete 
too, at Wachusett, a three-sport athlete. But uh, new daughter for him. Congratulations to he and his wife. He said he's just, he's just going on fumes right now for sleep. Kick it to the corner, Doherty for three. Lou Doherty's got three threes. He's got 11 points. That's a freshman. And it's 33-19 WPI. And this is how quickly, 6.43 to play here in the first half. You know, right around the 10-minute mark. Here's Davern. This was still a one-possession game, Kev. Absolutely. But again, you know, WPI right now is just ripping the twine from three-point land. Here's Pizos. Pizos with a three. And it just continues. WPI, you know, doing a great job of sharing the basketball, but they can really, really shoot the basketball from three-point land, Kevin. And they got some height. Pizos is 6'5". He can shoot the three. Rogers is 6'2". He can shoot the three. You know, when you look at Gaiman and you look at uh, Gremski, they're both 5'7". So it's a, it's a matchup advantage, at least beyond the arc. Converse draws the foul as he goes straight into the teeth of the defense. So he's going to get two. That foul goes against Garrett Stevenson. Stevenson picks up his first. It is the fourth team foul on WPI. Clark has three team fouls. Converse averaging seven points and five rebounds a game. And uh, Clark will go to their bench. John Pisacreta checking back into the ball game for Kyle Coughlin. 5.59 to play in the first half. WPI with the lead. Clark jumped out to the early lead, and then we were back and forth for about the first 10 minutes of this ball game. It was back and forth, possession to possession, who was in front. And then WPI just put well, their foot on the accelerator. Here's Stevenson. Little ping pong basketball there, but a great backdoor cut, nice pass. And after he caught it off the cut, he just dumped it inside. Stevenson, the fourth leading scorer on this team for WPI. Well, Clark certainly needed that bucket, a big bucket by Converse for the Cougars. Nine points a game, and Converse comes up with the steal down the other end. Clark's playing Iron Man basketball, too. We normally see them go deep into their bench. Beautiful look. Game into Davern, freshman to freshman. Well, a good look away pass. Now they got to get a few stops. They got to try to get some momentum going here as we're uh, approaching the five minute mark going into the half. Rogers fade away over Davern, no good. And Gremski the rebound, he is fouled by Doherty. It'll be number two on Lou Doherty. That will be the 15 foul on WPI. In the ball game now for, for Clark is Dennis Tobin. Let's take a look at it here. Here's the high pick, the high ball screen, and a nice reverse layup by Deverne. Here's Gaiman, the freshman from Florida. Vico Gaiman averaging double figures in scoring. Pisacreta, the senior, fouled on the floor. So that'll be the Six. sixteen foul. One more, and they will be shooting. At the half, I'll be joined by Clark University baseball coach and Worcester Bravehearts, well, manager, I'm sorry, manager, and Worcester Bravehearts manager, J.P. Pine. That's coming up in four and a half minutes. 38-23, WPI in front of Clark. Again, back and forth game for the first 10 minutes, and then the last five and a half, it has been all WPI. Three on the shot clock, game in for three, in and out. Pretty good look, Clark did a uh, great job. Uh, reach from behind. It's all right, it's only the fourth team foul on Clark here in the first half. Dakota Wheeler, another freshman for WPI, 6'5 freshman from out in Western Mass, East Hampton, Mass, went to Wilbraham and Munson. Billy Guerin, great NHL hockey player, went to Wilbraham and Munson. He was born in Worcester, but then grew up in Western Mass. It's where uh, John Packard, uh, Dean Packard, former Shepherd Hill coach's son, 
John, uh, 6'4", is, I believe, a junior. Wow. Rogers, beautiful job Big to keep it. Up. Now it's stolen. Gaiman ahead of the pack. Lays it up and in. Pico Gaiman's got four. He averages 15. It's 38-25. A 13-point advantage for WPI. Rogers looking for help, finds it. Wheeler, the leaner. Well, I'll tell you, Wheeler just taking it really, really smooth. Nice job getting it to the basket. Dakota Wheeler averaging five and a half points a game. So you, what you have is, as we mentioned, one player, Chris Rogers, averages in double figures. Jake Needleman's nine and a half a game for, for WPI. But they have so many players that score. Everyone contributes on a nightly basis. It will remain. Clark basketball with 3.14 to play. The Cougars trailing it by 15. There's the freshman, Dakota Wheeler, 6'5". Chris Bartley is going to go to his bench. Doherty's going to come back in. Paul Phillips going to his as well. Converse comes back in. The chess match between coaches. Try to give everyone rest. Well, it's so important that you have depth to your bench because if you're going to play this level of intense man-to-man -man defense, you know, you get gassed pretty easy when you're going on the college court. Pico Gaiman, hooping the hack. Gaiman a chance for a three-point play. These freshmen, three-quarters of the way through the season, not playing like freshmen anymore. Well, you said it. Pico Gaiman, a little shake and bake and a head fake, takes it hard to the basket off his right. Nice finish and a chance for a three-point play. So the foul's on Lou Doherty. That is number three on Doherty, so he's going to have to come out of the ball game. Pico Gaiman with the chance for the three-point play. A 57% free throw shooter. Knocks it down. Gaiman has seven points. It's a 12-point game. And you you said it, Kevin, but it's got to be possession by possession. you got to just think one stop at a time if you're Clark. You just chip away, chip away. You know, Beautiful great, entry pass. Yeah, great feed inside, but more importantly, Aaron Todd from York, Maine, just used his body so well. He made himself bigger in the low post on that roll, and it was a great pass. And that one's going to be, let's see, it could be on Todd. It is, but is he, did they call a one-on-one? -on -one yeah, that's what I was thinking. It is yeah. on Aaron Todd on the block. So they called it on the floor. So it'll be one and one rather than uh, two. Gaben hits the front end. And the, the bounce pass, again, it's, it's subtle. But anytime going into the low post, the bounce pass is, is just such a more effective pass. You see so many passes get deflected when they try to a chess pass or a lob pass. Well, single most difficult pass to defend. You know, a lot of kids don't want to get down in that defensive stance, you know, and lower their center of gravity. Zelinski. Uh, and it's picked off by Converse. You know, again, Converse, cerebral, yep. does a great job getting around the low post, doesn't get sealed, and he anticipates the fact that they're going to try to dump it in. He just steals the ball. Great job. Caught the rebound, gets it to Needleman. Jake Needleman, one of the talented freshmen on this WPI roster. Clark doing a great job in their man-to-man -man right now. WPI running a motion. Now well, Converse got beat that time, but they got an opportunity here. Here's Gaiman. Gaiman for three in the corner. High rebound, the rebound cleared by Wheeler, and here comes WPI, Rogers to Todd. Beautiful fast break for Tech. Well, tic-tac-toe passing and a great finish there for WPI. 15-point advantage for WPI. That was, that was an outstanding fast break. Here's Gaiman. Looks for a seam. Takes it. No good. Rogers the rebound. And WPI is going to press. Zielinski. Rogers quickly to the corner. 
the three off the front of the iron from Needleman, and Converse is there for the big rebound. Nice position rebound by Converse. Clark needs to do what they're doing right now, slow it down a little bit and run their offense. You know, they've got to execute, get some solid screens. And there's Converse, beautiful wow. touch on the four-footer from the baseline. That jump hook is so tough to defend. Talk about Bill Walton, there you yep. go. Converse has eight tonight. Well, Clark, either way, is going to get the ball back here, so they need a defensive stop. Nice motion offense, big steal. Here's Gaiman, ahead of the pack. Up and in, it's an 11-point game. Well, WPI will hold on for the last shot of the half. They're going to open it up. Who better to have the ball in their hands but Chris Rogers? Opening things up. Rogers is fouled on the floor before the shot. Clark has a couple to give. So they'll inbound the ball with 1.8 seconds remaining in the half. As the foul goes on to Biko Gaiman. 1.8 seconds. They have to catch and shoot it. Beatsos is up top. Reed Walker's in the paint. Looking for Walker. Walker gets it, fade away on the baseline, no good. Well, I'll tell you, they got lucky there in terms of Clark. That shot never should have been there. Well executed, just didn't go in. Cougars chipping away at the lead, and we are at the half here at the Neller Center. It is WPI 44, Clark 33. Joined by J.P. Pine, the manager and head coach of the Clark University baseball team and the Worcester Bravehearts as well. That's all coming up when we return on our halftime show. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Charter TV3 and UMass Memorial Healthcare have teamed up to bring you the latest news and trends in healthcare. Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare, brings you the healthcare topics that are important to you. From stroke prevention to allergies, skin care to sports injury prevention, and nutrition to pregnancy, Health Watch and UMass Memorial Healthcare informs you on the issues that affect you on a daily basis. Health Watch on Charter TV3. For extended interviews with UMass Memorial Healthcare experts, log on to our website. Local sports have a unique way of bringing families together, bringing generations together, bringing neighbors together. In Central Mass, you have families that have been here for years and you have grandparents that played at a certain high school and they're watching their grandson or granddaughter play at their same high school. And there's something real special about that. Everyone comes out on a Friday night for football or to support the basketball team or the softball team and everyone wants to support their team and everyone feels whether or not they have a son or daughter playing or even if they don't know anyone on the roster, they come out because they went to school there or they're from that town. And for us to be able to cover that is really unique, really special, and really gratifying. We'll run into people all the time, whether they're home from college or they're visiting family and they don't live in the area anymore. Or they'll say, hey, how's my team doing? You know, how are these guys going to be this year? And so people remember where they came from. They remember their high schools. They remember their playing days. And if you were from here, you know how unique and how special it is that you can get coverage of your high school and your college. We have a bond with uh, the community. They appreciate us, we appreciate them. To hear people cheer for you when you show up because you're just there covering the game. We're not the game, but it's cool. <laughs> I, I've had people tell me that we brought high school sports to a whole new level in Central Mass because of the way we cover high school sports and cover them like they're professional athletes. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. Reporters in the field. 
and an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. Welcome back, everyone. We're at the half here. Clark in front, or actually WPI in front of Clark, 44-33. And we're joined now by Clark baseball coach and manager, as well as the manager of the Worcester Bravehearts, J.P. Pine. And J.P., uh, thanks for joining us. Let's, your your season is right around the corner. It's year-round, though, now with college sports and the, and the indoor facilities. But your third year here, your first year you broke the record for wins. Last year you broke that record for wins. Uh, what are you expecting here for, for year number three? It's hard to keep doing that. Yeah, um, you, you know, I'm not really going to do the predictions thing we talk about with our team, but uh, – uh, you know, we want that steady improvement. We want to, to continue to develop our players, to continue to get better, um, and, and to, to get to the postseason. We were able to get a taste of the postseason last year. We want to build on that and hopefully take it a step further here in 2018. And I know that you recruit all over the country, uh, but you, you certainly want to put the fence around Central Massachusetts and get the best kids, and you've gotten a lot of good Central Mass kids. What's the, what's the reception like when you get out there? And... Uh, and how much do you enjoy getting those local kids? Because obviously more eyes are on you when you have a couple local guys. Yeah, it's really gratifying to have a, a local guy come here and be successful. Um, I, I grew up in Milford. I have a great respect for the, all the programs in Worcester. I think that uh, in my experience in the, in the last three years is it's a great baseball town. The, the people get it. They, they, they love a winner. They, they expect it done the right way. And, um, and they reward you when you do those things. So uh, it, it's, it's a, a really special place to coach baseball and to play baseball. And uh, when we can get those local guys, I think we're doing a lot to change the perception of our program locally. And we've benefited with some really talented local guys. And Milford obviously is a phenomenal, has a great history with baseball in all sports, really. But uh, growing up, what was it like playing baseball in Milford? Because that's kind of a, a religion. Yeah, it was it was fun. I mean, as as a kid playing you know Legion baseball, it was you know the, the people would be there you know during batting practice putting out their lawn chairs and uh, games were on the TV and the radio and and it was a special experience and and uh, you had to be you had to sort of be mentally tough because if you didn't do well, you heard about it. Right. And, and I think it prepared me to go on to to college and then from there. But uh, uh, I wouldn't trade my experience growing up there. And, and the, the rivalries that we had, I remember with, with, with Vernon Hill and, uh, you know, Maine South and East Side, th those were always the games that we circled. And uh, so it's, it's fun to be in, in this area and to see it from uh, the slightly different angle. <laughs> and now in terms of coaching, and you've coached and managed all over from uh, Maine, University of Maine Division One to uh, the AA affiliate in, in uh, Manchester for the for the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, and now with the Futures Collegiate League, you've managed the Bravehearts. How much do you learn as a, as a manager, as a coach, at the different levels of the game, and, and what changes, whether it's at the Division I level, Division III college, or professional level AA? You know, you manage guys that, that went on and, and are in the, uh, in the majors right sure. now. Sure, yeah. You know, I think that the thing that you learn the most is that the game doesn't change. And, and the things that you that, that don't require a lot of God-given talent, like uh, a work ethic and, and having a plan and, and um, being prepared every single day, those things don't change. It doesn't matter if I'm at Clark University playing against, you know, Mike Callahan at WPI or if, if I was with the Fisher Cats and we were playing against the Portland Sea Dogs. You, you get prepared, you work hard, you, you, you believe in what you're doing, you believe in the process, and uh, you, you know if you get positive results, you move on, and if you get negative results, you, you maybe change that process a little bit. So um, th the talent of the people playing in the different places uh, might be, might be uh, a little bit different, but hopefully the work ethic isn't, and you know their commitment to what you're doing isn't. And if you get that level of buy-in, and I've been fortunate here in year three at Clark that our guys have really bought into what we're doing, and that's translated to success on the field. And you guys are going to have your spring trip, and in, in the beginning of March you'll go down uh, and, and play in the warmer weather. Uh, first of all, how much are you looking forward to that? Just to be able to get outside and play games. I mean, you have the turf here, which is the phenomenal facility, but still, when it's, you know, the wind chills minus 2, yeah. minus 10, you can't do much outside. Well, don't forget, now, my first two years, and we're, we've got one scheduled this year, the home opener is February 24th. Oh, that's right. So I, you put in to cover that game, I, I think, did, right? I yeah, did. I did. That's right, all yeah. my calendar, uh, too. Yeah, so, so um, no, we, we look, Florida's special. It, it's a unique thing in, in our sport because 
you know, a lot of times you go down there and you play 10 games. So you, you play a quarter of your season in, in a week. And, and from a pitching staff standpoint, nobody's built for that. So uh, to have the turf and to be able to spread some things out it is something that really benefits all of our athletic facilities at Clark. I mean, we feel really fortunate to have them, but we're able to spread our, our schedule out a little bit. And uh, But, but Florida is always fun. It, it really can bring that team together quickly early. When you get back up here, too, I'm sure a lot of coaches – collegiately are calling you for early season games because yeah. it's just the weather being what it is. I mean, it's never the first month and a half, even two months of the season in college, just because college starts so early, it's very rare that you're able to play games certainly the first month just because of snow, rain, everything that, that happens in a New England winter and spring. Yeah, and last year I actually slept in the, in the Dolan Athletic Center the night before our home opener because we had plow trucks clearing snow until 6 in the morning. But we played at 3 o'clock that day against Becker, and thankfully we won. But, uh, but yeah, we, we definitely benefit from it. And uh, uh, we have great relationships with, with uh, the schools all sort of in the Worcester Consortium. So um, anytime we can help people out, and, and, and we, we try to do that. And, um, but, uh, no, we, we benefit from that, and, and we can't wait to get rolling, that's for sure. And you've managed the Worcester Bravehearts now for a few years. What has that experience been like? And uh, you really get no break now. Because right. most college coaches, at least once the summer hits, you get, you know, you go, you do your recruiting and that kind of stuff. But you are, with that Futures right. League, you're every single day. Yeah, and thankfully, I have a great coaching staff, um, you, you know, that, that really, really pick up my slack on the road, do a great job. Uh, Sean Trindle, my recruiting coordinator here, does a great job. Uh, and, and sort of allows me to have that experience. But there is no break, but it's an awful lot of fun. And I think that doing the, the Brave Hearts it has really allowed my family and I to, to really get acclimated and, and get comfortable here because of how much the people in the city care about that team. Yeah, JP, thanks for joining thanks, us. Thanks, Kevin. Best of luck this right, year. We'll see you on February 24th. Yes, definitely. All right, if not good. me, it's going to be Andy. I All think right. that's in his contract. All right. <laughs> All right, sounds good. JP Pine, the manager of the Clark University baseball team. We're back with the second half right after this. We're proud to lead with high school sports stories because we know that's important to our viewers. That's important to our communities. I think it's incredibly unique because you just don't see this amount of coverage other places. We can do five and six minutes at 10 o'clock, whereas other stations might do two and a half minutes, and of that, 30 seconds is on high school sports. It's very easy to be enthusiastic watching these guys play, whether it's high school football or field hockey or lacrosse. When you see somebody make an outstanding play, you're kind of fired up about that. I come back, I'm like, Kev, I, I couldn't believe this play I saw in this game. And to see and to kind of be able to capture some of those magic moments. When you're there to witness history, that's really cool. We're out there every day shooting the games ourselves and coming back and editing it and writing it ourselves. You get a certain insight that you don't get if you're, say, in a press box. We never forget the players that come from Central Mass, those that are lucky enough to play professional sports. We follow them in the pros. We never forget those guys coming from Central Mass. I've had people come up and say to me that, you know, we still watch and we're still fans because they can watch on TV. Has it brought fans to the game? Has it impacted local sports? I hope so. Coaches tell us it has. Certainly our goal is just to, just to cover the game and to really highlight the positive of, of high school and, and local college sports. And we're enjoying what we do and that I hope that comes across. There's no other place I'd rather be and there's no other job I'd rather do. I know everybody uh, agrees with me that it's wonderful to see construction cranes in Worcester. We've got buildings going up, the colleges are all building, things are happening in Worcester. On uh, Chronicles, we hope to be talking about all the issues that affect Worcester. There's a lot of development going on, a lot of interesting politics, always our share of scandal and whatnot, and uh, we hope to have a lively uh, repartee. Very interesting, lots going on, and uh, we want you to tune in and watch us talk about it. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. 
presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. Reporters in the field and an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. All right, so here's your first half highlights, and we said back and forth game early on. And we talked about defense. You know, defense certainly has dictated a lot of this game. Is Gremski, you give him a little bit of daylight, he's really, really going to hurt you. Yeah, there's Gremski up top. This is the bullet pass to Converse. Converse with a great up fake and in. And I'll tell you, Adam Converse has been a phenomenal player in the first half. Eight points for Clark on four of five shooting. But look at this WPI fast break. Picture perfect. Ball touches the ground once for one dribble. Length of the court. Yeah, no, great job. And here you go. Good look at the freshman from Clark. You know, I'm sure he's not enjoying the snow since he's from Florida, but uh, Pico has uh, given them a great spark. So the bench points is the story in the first half. And Kevin, you and I were talking about it off camera. 21 points from the WPI bench, none from Clark. Now, Clark only had two players come off the bench in the first half. So Clark played seven players. WPI played 10. It's the contributions, it's the bench. We talked about it, the first half of the first half, the first 10 minutes, back and forth game. If you're playing f five, six guys, seven guys total, you're gonna get tired, you're gonna start to wear down. When you do, that's when that bench strength can come into play and Chris Bartley's bench is good. He rolls that five out and they are good players and they're pushing it and with the tempo of the game, such an up-tempo game, then all of a sudden, WPI stretched that lead out to double figures. Well, WPI, you know, out of the 10 players that played in the first half, nine of them scored. Comparatively speaking, of the seven that played, five scored for Clark University. So, again, it's a collegiate-sized court. You know, it's much wider, it's much longer than a high school basketball court. Uh, you need to have a lot of depth. If you, if you take a look, there's certainly a yeoman share of coaches that help Paul Phillips but right now, Clark University has got a couple players, key players that are hurt, that uh, are not suited up tonight. Yeah, their leading scorer in rebounding, Luca McCormick, the 6'5 junior from the IMG Academy in Florida. He's hurt, and that's a big one. That's a good pass down low. Reed Walker converts. Walker has six points for WPI. The freshman, Lou Doherty, a career high, 11 points in just nine minutes in the first half off the bench. So he was a big reason, that bench scoring. Well, he shot it so well from three-point land. You know, unfortunately, he picked up three fouls as well. Yeah. But that's where that depth comes into play. So you have a kid coming off the bench, career high, 11 points in nine minutes, picks up three fouls. OK. Right. Rogers comes in for him. You know, your senior and your leading scorer. Exactly. Our thanks to Mark Therrien, too, sports information director, assistant sports information director at WPI for the great nugget of information you know we can't be remiss uh, right next to Tyrone Hicks on the Clark University bench is uh, the Clark Jersey number 25 for Pat Orozco Tyler Davern down low yeah Pat Orozco yep. former uh, four-year player here and certainly a former coach yep uh, just a great guy that uh, Lost his battle uh, with cancer and uh, far too young. You know, and Indeed. I had a chance to know him as a player. Here's Clark doing a great job on the push here. They get it inside to Devere and he goes up. He'll get two from the charity stripe. But again, I think it's important, Kevin, that Clark does a better job on the defensive boards. And... Uh, Look for them to use, if they're not gonna go a little deeper into that bench, and I don't know the athleticism that Paul has, um, look for him to use timeouts uh, more frequently here in the second half. Could cut the lead to single digits. Yeah, Davern does indeed. It's a nine point game. Six points for Davern, he averages 11 a game. But you're right, that's where you have to use your, your timeouts like you would in other sports. You're not doing it for X's and O's, you're doing it to give your guys a breather. Well, it, you know, but, but you take a look at Jake, he gets the ball, he does a great job going with his left hand, but as soon as he got that first step, and again, this is experience, 
he turns his body into the defender and, and protects the basketball. That's how he picked up the foul. Great job of using his body. Chance for a three-point play for Jake Wisniewski. The 6'4 sophomore, Wisniewski has eight points tonight. Averages eight and a half. Averages four rebounds. He's a 67% free throw shooter. Former Quaybog star and a phenomenal athlete. Converse picks up his second. Wisniewski does indeed complete the three-point play. Here's Gaiman. Pico Gaiman so quick. What a great handle. Gaiman to the hoop. Rogers the rebound. Good help defense from WPI. Again, a great job of getting himself into position to score. Just couldn't finish it off. Needleman. Rogers up top. Big steal by Gaiman. Here goes Gaiman. The step through and in. Well, nice finish. 10 point advantage right now for the visiting WPI. 12 points for the freshman, Biko Gaiman. From Fort Pierce, Florida. Walker. Well, they called Deverne early. Big steal. There's a good look at it right there. And then the step through. Nice flip off the window. A little English on the ball. Paul Phillips. Doesn't agree with the call. It's only the first though on Davern. Here's Rogers. Rogers up and in. Uh, Rogers got a little bit of daylight coming off that screen in the corner. 12 point lead for WPI, 51 39. We were just talking about the fact that uh, Coach Phillips uh, has done a really good job with this team. And himself in this game. Yeah, he's uh, been. He's ball been, has been very good. Point, very Travel. Um, part. Travel. Gavern will check out. As will Pisacreta. As Clark goes to their bench. You know, we've been. I have to admit that we have been uh, very kind to Mr. Paul Phillips. It looks like he has a, a stool over there. Do you recognize that at all? No. So I don't know where that came from, but uh, I, I know he's got a bad back. Yeah, yeah, he does have a bad back. That's probably exactly what it's for. Great defense by Clark. Here's Gremsky. Gremsky to the floor. Gremsky draws the foul. Jake Needleman. For WPI, whistled for the foul. Second on Needleman there is Paul Phillips, talking to his freshman guard, Anthony Gremsky. So that will be WPI's third team foul. Gaiman. And Gremsky for three, bottom of the barrel. Well, he has such a quick release, he just dials it up immediately. Big bucket right there. Kremski has nine points, all off of three-pointers. And cut the lead to nine. Kremski averaging six and a half a game. Answers right back, big bucket. Timeout on the floor. WPI with the lead, Dakota Wheeler with the big hoop. We're back with more from the Neller Center right after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. 
Here's WPI's schedule coming up. They uh, got the Coast Guard Academy at home, then at Babson, at Emerson, or home against Emerson, home against Springfield, at MIT. And there are just, there are no easy games in the new MAC. Every game is a battle. And then you and then you get into the league playoffs, and then you know then you're trying to get to the to the NCAA tournament. The the respect for the league though certainly has grown as well with the level of success that these teams have had. There's Paul Phillips, John Ginnity as well. John Ginnity, a former player here for Paul Phillips on the coaching staff. John was talking to the officials during that timeout. Uh, trying to get a better understanding. I think he was looking at uh, something on the high post screen. 16-12 to play in the game. 54-42. WPI in front. Davern for three. Long rebound. Knocked around and last touched by Clark. It'll be WPI basketball. Well, Kremski did a nice job of keeping it alive, but Converse just couldn't hold on to it. Now Clark's going to show some full court pressure. Here's Lou Doherty. Doherty playing with three fouls and a career high 11 points in just nine minutes in the first half. Gremski on him. Rogers going inside. Oh, Converse. Converse with the swat. Great block from behind. Gaiman. Converse calling for it. Zip pass to Davern. Oh, nice job. Davern getting in there, setting a screen, and then just rolling right to the basket, and a dime pass got there. WPI looking to go inside. Stevenson. Oh, the two big back fellow. Doors. Nice. Nice look to Reed Walker. Well executed. Well, uh, two back doors, one right after the other one, and Walker with the finish. Walker, a 6'4 freshman from Florida, Lithia, Florida. Gaiman, this is Florida on Florida with Gaiman and Walker. Pisacreto looking for the big man, Davern spins to the hoop. Tyler Davern showing off the agility and the athleticism. Well, nice job getting the ball, taking it off the bounce, Kevin, and just getting himself a little bit of space to get that shot off. And a good finish. And again, the big guy is only a, so a freshman. Yep. Foul off the ball, I think, is on Davern. Yeah, Paul Phillips not happy with that one. And I have to concur. Let's see. Here's the pass inside. Here he uses the left foot. He drop steps, throws that hammer foot down. A nice spin move into the middle. Davern picks up his second. 14.40 to play in the game, 56-46. It is a 10-point ball game. We were back and forth, possession to possession for the first 10 minutes of this game. Then WPI got a double-digit lead. And we've been kind of back and forth ever since. Actually, they were up at one point by 19. And then Clark chipped away at it. Now it's a 10-point game. Well, and I think that that's a real key, is that Clark University, they were down by, I believe, as many as 17 at one yep. point, and uh, it would have been pretty easy for them to uh, get a little bit more careless, trying to get come back too quickly, but they've chipped away at it. They've been patient, and they've worked hard. 10-point advantage right now for WPI. Here's Gaiman on the run. Converse just inside the arc. Converse, 10 points tonight. He has really played a whale of a game. Well, it cuts it to eight. You know, WPI definitely has a little bit of a height advantage. Yeah, Converse, he's got seven rebounds. He's got 10 points. Great defense. Rogers from the corner for three. Nice box out by Gremski. Here's Pisacreta, oh, count yeah. it. Yep. John Pisacreta. And we got a single digit ball game. It's a six point game, chance to make it five. You know, take a look at it. Between the legs, then he goes hard to his left side. Just, you know, he attacks the rim and he does it so well. 
Again, right into your living room, gets bumped, and a nice left-handed flip up and in. And that's the fourth foul on Lou Doherty. So Doherty checks out with four fouls. Cougars making a run. They trailed by 11 at the half. They trail it by six right now. Make it five. Well, and again, Clark comes back with a little bit of full court contained pressure. Five point ball game. Big possession in this game right now. Clark holds and hits. You're talking about a one possession oh, game. Boy. Rogers hangs and hits. I got to be honest. Cut. I think that's at least three, possibly four backdoor cuts that uh, WPI has executed tonight. You know, clearly something that they practice in their offensive sets. Chris Bartley, again, doing a great job there. And they're patient, Kevin, too, because they're usually coming with under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Gaiman. Count it. Gaiman will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Aaron Todd will pick up the foul. Biko Gaiman starting to feel it, pumping his fist. Well, take a look at it. Again, he gets a little bit of daylight. He splits two WPI defenders. Weak side help comes over. Steps in a little bit too late, and again, Gaiman just does a great job of using his body, and he's able to shift in midair to protect the basketball. It is a four-point ball game. 15 points for Biko Gaiman, the freshman. That is his season average. We still got 12.45 to play in the game. Rogers coming off the pick, now getting the oh, trap the up double. top. Somebody's got to be open. Wisniewski, Davern the rebound. Gaiman has it. Chance to make it a one possession game right here. It's a four point game. Gaiman drops it home. It's a two point contest. Playing to the crowd a little bit is Gaiman. Justifiably so. He's got a great rhythm going on right now. Todd on the block. Working on Davern. Todd. Converse. The rebound. And Clark can tie it or take the lead with a three. Kind of a lazy pass. Great job behind the back was Wisniewski. Wisniewski. Uh, and there's a foul on Converse. Wisniewski a chance for a three-point play. The foul is what's going to really hurt you. Well, there's the unbelievable save right there. Dave Zielinski going behind the back with the save, with the save rather. And Jake Wisniewski taking it hard to the basket. That's a big swing, opportunity to uh, make that a three-point swing. Wisniewski with the three-point play. And yeah. it is a five-point WPI lead. Here's Kremski. Now remember that time, 11.53 to go in the second half. Clark had an opportunity to either tie it or take the lead. Kremski with an NBA three and then some. That thing's about three steps beyond the arc. Here comes Needleman, kicks it, three, off the mark. Walker trying to save it, can't do it. And Gaiman's going to come back into the ball game for Clark as he got a quick breather. Talk to John Ginnity, one of the assistant coaches, and Biko Gaiman will come into the ball game. So you have Gaiman and Kremski, the two guards. Chris Bartley looking on. Clark has been very explosive in the open court with their transition, doing a nice job here. Here's Converse. Off the front of the rim, kept alive, and Gremski tried to spike it off of Walker. Here comes Needleman. Needleman for three. Wisniewski the rebound. Again, one of the leaders in the league in offensive rebounds. Jake Wisniewski, the offensive rebound, converts. Oh, that's a big, big basket. He got the offensive rebound, and then he took it right into the throw to the beast. Drop step, power move in the paint, and a lay-in. Clark wants a timeout, and this is one of those timeouts you're just, you want to give your guys a breather. Because they got it down to two. WPI has pushed it up to seven. We're back with more from the Neller Center right after this. 
If you feel like you're getting knocked around by the big insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Whether it's a car accident, slip and fall, or dog bite, don't sign anything from the insurance company until you've talked to a lawyer. Hiring a lawyer can double or even triple the initial settlement offer. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Let the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia fight for you. And welcome back to the Neller Center. Kevin Shea with Kevin Wells. We thank you for tuning in tonight to our broadcast of NCAA basketball, a city battle between Clark and WPI. This Friday, we got a great one. Doherty and St. John's from the Ed Capstick Wellness Center <laughs> on the campus of Doherty High School. Doherty's my number one team in Central Mass, and they have been so for, I think I voted them in the last four, five, maybe even six polls, but at least the last four or five, Doherty has been my number one team in Central Mass. Taking on St. John's. St. John's has got a big one tonight against Wachusett. We saw Wachusett early in the season beat Neshoba. Wachusett's number two. Bob Foley picking up his 900th career coaching win recently. I'll be honest, uh, Jerry Quinn, uh, the legend of St. Thomas More, just picked up his 1,000th victory. Wow. I remember us doing games with Coach Quinn at Worcester Academy. Exactly. When Sarah was at Worcester Academy and doing St. Thomas More games. Walker, Converse. Oh, Converse. Now the floor burns, and now it's stolen the other way. WPI going up and in, Dave Zielinski. Well, a great hustle by, Con by Converse and the Cougars. WPI stretching their lead once again. Nine point lead for WPI. Remember it was 11.53, Clark had the ball down two. You're right. Yeah, it's incredible. You know, I mean, you're talking less than two minutes. It's a one possession, two point game and, and it becomes a nine point game like that. Wisniewski whistled for the foul, just the first on Jake Wisniewski but it's the seventh team foul on WPI, so Clark is already shooting, already in the bonus. Well, it certainly can pay big, big dividends if they convert and uh, attack the rim. Here's Biko Gaiman. Gaiman hits the first. Gaiman will have one more. And he hits it. And here's the steal, Pisacreta. Pisacreta lost the handle. Converse picks it up and in. Big bucket there by Converse. Nice job. You know, so, Kev. Yeah. Go ahead. If you look at WPI right here, 15, Jake Needleman, and then you look at Lou Doherty when he comes back into the ball game, they're like clones the way they're built. You know, they're short, they're strong, they're quick with the ball. It's a 4 nothing Clark run, and now it's a five-point game. Here's Needleman, the baseline jumper, no good. Gaiman runs down the rebound. Clark can make this one a one-point game. Wisniewski almost got the steal. Jake from behind almost. There's Biko Gaiman. 9.02 to play in the game. 14 on the shot clock. Gaiman crosses over, elevates. Biko Gaiman, sensational player, the freshman, does it all for the Cougars. It's a three point game. Three. Oh, Might have got away with a three second clock. Here's Wisniewski. Wisniewski spins, turn around. Hits the credit of the rebound. Clark can tie it with the three. With a field goal, it'll be a one point game. 8.28 to play. On the baseline, and oh, Piss the hit hard. He hit hard. And the officials call a timeout to see if he's okay. Paul Phillips is just shaking his head. No foul. Go 
goes hard to the basket, kind of leaned in. I thought he hit his head on the floor. That's what it looked, you know, from the naked eye, looking at it in, in full speed. I don't know if he did right there, but man, he hit hard. He hit hard, so he's going to come out. WPI is going to their bench as well. Aaron Todd, the big man, the 6'6". Forward comes in, and here's Lou Doherty having a night. Primetime Doherty with 11 points. Those all came in a nine-minute stretch in the first half. He came off the bench and really lent a spark to this WPI team, but he's playing with four personal fouls. So here's Doherty and Needleman on the court at the same time. If you look quick, you're not going to know who has the ball. Yeah, okay, you're right. Travel, Needleman. Another opportunity here for Clark. 8.09 to play in the game. Three point lead for WPI. WPI led by 11 at the half, 44 33. It's a 65 62 game right now. Davern's going to put it in play to Biko Gaiman. They can tie it with a three. Here's Gaiman. Gaiman running around the defense to Converse. Converse, the elbow jumper, front rim. Rogers going to run, and Gremski called for the foul. Gremski picks up his second on the reach. It's the fifth team foul on Clark. Not necessarily a bad foul. Uh, WPI had a little bit of a break going there. Certainly put a stop to yeah. uh, the potential of them getting an easy bucket. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's a fast break situation. Take it. Here's Walker for three. Walker drains it. Walk. Reed Walker showing a little bit of his inside and his outside now. 6 4 from Lithia, Florida. 11 points for Reed Walker. Gaiman looking for some help. Up top to Gremski, 15 on the shot clock, 7-10 to play in the game. Six point lead for WPI. Nice patience, six on the shot. Here's to the Gremski. corner, Converse almost stolen by Rogers. There is one second remaining on the shot clock. So it's gonna have to be a catch and shoot situation quickly for Clark. Coughlin checks out. John Pissacreta coming back into the ballgame for Clark, so that's good news for the Cougars. Their leader, their captain. They got it off in time. Didn't hit it. Good luck, actually. Yep. Clark with a little bit of a dry, dry spell right now. Six point deficit. They go inside to Todd. Ball is on the ground. And Rogers to Walker. Still in the paint. Yeah, they finally got it. <laughs> yep, you saw it. The old coach saw that one. The three seconds. Well, by then I would have been saying, geez, give him a <laughs> I would have been yelling, give him a 10. He's camping in there. Oh, That's great. These flashbacks aren't good, Kevin. Uh, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Another opportunity for the Cougars. Converse, nice. beautiful. Gremski on the back door oh. to Davern. Great job. Timeout, Clark. They cut the lead to six. How many times did we see that during their Bartlett career? Well, a great back door cut. Let's take Converse. Back door by Gremski. Gremski draws the attention and lays it off to his brother over there. They Tyler were, Devern. They were running and gunning with Bartlett, and they're doing the same thing with Clark here as freshman. Oh, nice job. Great job sharing the basketball. Well, buckle up. 6-18 remaining in this one. 64-68. Clark has been knocking on the door the entire second half. It's a game, Kevin, in the first half. Certainly easily could have gotten out of hand. Yep. WPI with a 17 point spread. And uh, Clark just chipped away, chipped away. They took their time, they ran their offense. And uh, lo and behold, we approach six minutes and they're down by four. And you know, with the loss of Luca McCormick, one of the captains for this Clark team, injured out tonight, 
Leads the team in scoring and rebounding. You need guys to step up. Well, let's look at the three freshmen. Biko Gaiman, 21 points tonight. Came in averaging five a game. Anthony Gremski, nine points tonight. Came in averaging six and a half a game. Tyler Davern, 12 points. Came in averaging 11 points a game. The three freshmen, the three amigos, have really stepped up for Paul Phillips' crew tonight along with Converse, but you look at the three freshmen and what they've given to this team tonight. Big reason why it's a four point game. I'll tell you, and Pissaretta has just been uh, the senior uh, leader that he always has been. Uh, look for him to really uh, wreak a little bit of havoc here as we get late in the game. Rogers, there's your leader right there saying, give me the ball, I want it in my hands, let's settle it down. Six point lead for WPI. You know, I remember talking about this last year. Rogers, he's not flashy. He's what you, you know, there was a year there where you, the lunch pail kid oh, yeah. is, was like your mantra. I um, love those guys, though. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what he is. He's not flashy. He's not someone that you're going to pick out of a crowd, but he's consistent on both ends of the court. Yep. You're right. There's a foul on Gaiman. You're right. Converse is that way. Rogers is that way. Gaiman gets called for the foul, and that's, some of that's being a freshman, some of that's being tired too, I'm sure, at 5.39 to play, and you've played, you know, almost the entire game. Six-point game. Big possession for both teams here with five and a half to play. And Pissacretta with the steal. Walker going back. Pissacretta swatted by Walker. What a defensive play from Reed Walker. Great timing coming from the backside. You know, he just lined that up and wanted to pin it but he was able to knock it away. Big defensive stop for WPI. Huge. Would have made it a four point game. Oh, here's, here's Walker. Walker. And he's swatted by Davern, but the follow by Rogers. You know, just so simple. Right place, right time, left handed lay in. But it's just a smart player. It's a smart, it's a fundamentally sound player. As you said, not going to be flash, but he's why you win games. Wisniewski, count it. Jake Wisniewski with a chance for a three-point play. And WPI making a run right now. Well, look at Rodgers again. You know, he got Wisniewski going to the basket. He gets hit. Converse picks up his fourth. You know, Wisniewski is only a sophomore as well. So it's not like, uh, you know, he's an experienced kid for a very young man. 4.39 to play. They open the lead to 10. Yeah, Jake Wisniewski has had himself a game. 15 points for Wisniewski, a handful of rebounds. He came in averaging eight and a half a game. So almost doubled his average, his season average. This is a Paul. good look at Tyrone yep. Hicks Jr. What are they saying in the huddle? Right there, as you mentioned, Tyrone Hicks, is, his father coaches him in the in the Special Olympics, the Special Olympics flag football teams, and his dad's such a great guy. Tyrone is such a great guy and has done such a phenomenal job with this Clark program through the years. But I, what are you saying if you're Paul Phillips in that huddle right now? Ten-point game with 4.39 to play. Well, I mean, you know, patience and hard-nosed basketball got us back into the ball game. You're down by 10. I really did have some infinite words of wisdom. Uh-huh. And you thought that you were pushing your button. So as I was speaking, you silenced me. Oh, so, that's what I was yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I've done that a couple you know, times. Yeah, that's your experience. I was hitting so. the wrong. This is our first year with the cough button. This is new technology after 20 years. I've done that now three times. When I was going to take a drink of water, I was hitting the cough button <laughs> on you and uh, hit the wrong one. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate that. Actually, our viewing audience really appreciates it. <laughs> Davern saves it for gaming. That's exactly what it, the one is right in front of me. Right. Your box is right is, in front of right. me. And I have. I've done that now at least three times. 
Yeah, take it. Our setup is a little different tonight. It's all right, threw me. Creatures of habit, yep. no, no, no issues. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Here's Gaiman, in and out. And the foul's gonna go on Davern for the reach. Yeah, there was a lot of contact going on inside there. Oh, it goes on Todd. It goes on Aaron Todd at WPI. He picks up well, his third. I was going to say, that's why I said, I didn't oh. know if he wrapped his arm around Devern. Oh, okay. They got tangled up. Yep. It's the eighth team foul, so still a bonus, regular bonus. Davern will shoot the one and one. In and out. Walker the rebound. Here's Rogers. Here's Todd. Again, I will I, I will say to our viewing audience, you know, when you look at Rogers, um, he, he he has a, a real glimpse of, of uh, Danny Trant, who you know, God yeah, rest I remember his soul, played, yep. played here. One of the victims of 9-11, uh, phenomenal player here. Yeah, and and uh, was a teammate of Tyrone Hicks. So I think if you said that to him, he'd say, you know what, you're absolutely right. But uh, the more I watch Rodgers, uh, you know, the more I really like the way he plays. Big trip right here for the Cougars. And it's Converse. Uh, step through. Walker the rebound. Still yep. a 10 point game with 3.25 to play. Reed Walker doing a great job of staying home and not leaving his feet when Converse did that step through move from behind. Gaiman. Rogers will be at the line shooting one and one. 17 foul on Clark. Both teams in the bonus. Both teams will be at the line from here on out over the final 3.15. Rogers knocks it down. 14 points tonight for Chris Rogers. Rogers hits them both. Here's Gaiman, off the screen, back to Converse. Converse up and in, beautiful screen and roll. Yeah, nice job. Brings it back to a 10 point advantage for WPI. Watch for WPI to be uh, very patient, executing their offense, and most importantly, using the clock. It is a 10 point game, 76 66, 244 to play. Rogers, pull up jumper with five on the shot clock. Rattles around and out. Daver in the rebound. Gaiman brings it up for the Cougars. Here's Kremski for three. Seven point game. Anthony Kremski with his fourth three of the night. 12 uh, points for the freshman. And I had, it's 76 69. I had mentioned 25 feet and in, and he was all the 25 feet away from the basket that time. Yeah, these aren't cheapies. Uh, here's a look away from Biko. He gives it to Gremski. And again, he doesn't even hit any eye, and he just uh, rips the cord. Look at that. Downtown. Quick, NBA three. Yeah, quick release. A couple steps beyond the arc. 2.31 to play. And it is a seven point game. So WPI will definitely use a the clock. They'll be patient. But most assuredly, if they get an open lane, they're going hard to the basket. You know, they're gonna look to try to, at worst case scenario, get to the free throw line. Full court pressure by Clark. Great Here's pass. Wisniewski. Oh. Travel. Well, they got that turnover. Seven point game, 2.21 to play. Clark with the ball. Once again, big trip right here. Oh, 
Here's Gaiman. Gaiman lost it. 2.13 to play. Well, if Still I'm seven point game. If I'm Clark, I like the matchup with Gaiman on being covered by Rodgers. You know, I think that Gaiman can beat him off the bounce and get him tied up a little bit. As much as I like Rodgers, I think the foot speed that Gaiman has with the ball in his hands is a little too much. Here's Wisniewski. Needleman. Doherty. Now, is that clock that you're talking that we're talking about using the clock? Yep. Under two minutes to play in the game. 13 on the shot clock. Here's Doherty. Wisniewski for three. Davern, great job boxing out. It'll be Clark Ball. Beautiful job, though, by Tyler Davern. You know, I, I heard a coach, a high school coach, when I was covering a game this week, preaching to his kids during the game, body first, ball second. And that's exactly what Davern did. Get into the body of your man, take him out, shut him off, and then get to the ball second. There's that matchup. You know, I, I just think all day, every day, off the bounce, if you can open things up, that's going to provide the opportunity. Joe Peters, our cameraman, taking the charge down there under the hoop. Biko Gaiman, five-point game, though. Needleman and WPI able to break the press. That was Nooski. And Davern with another big rebound. Gaiman, no good. Uh, they got to get somebody on the glass to help him. He's hurt. Five-point game. Gaiman is hurt. He's down on the ground. And it's still WPI ball with under a minute to play, 76-71. This would be a tremendous loss for the Cougars. You hope it's just a cramp. And it's just because it's... That's what it looks like. It's it's from playing, you know, all the minutes that he plays. Gaiman just going hard all night long with very little rest time. This is a, a Clark team that has played two off the bench all night. And they have battled. 76-71, under a minute to play. 59 seconds to play in this game. WPI's got the ball in a six-point lead. Gaiman's going to go to the bench to get 10-2. Kyle Coughlin in the ball game for Gaiman. There's Doherty and WPI. Doherty will be the one inbounding the ball under the hoop. Rodgers, and they're going to enjoy the ball a little bit here. 16 on the shot clock. A six-point lead. Here's Needleman up top. Down to nine. Six on the shot clock. Rodgers with three on the shot clock. Hits the jumper, and that's a dagger. That is a huge, huge shot from Chris Rodgers. They worked it down to three seconds on the shot clock. 41 and a half on the game clock. Well, again, there's their patience and their go-to guy. So Rogers, little crossover, gets into some space. Nice soft, that's a shooter's touch, right off the front of the iron, drops back in. 78-71, that was WPI's timeout. So we'll see what Chris Bartley has in his bag of tricks, what they're going to do coming out of that timeout. Biko Gaiman is still on the bench for Clark. You hope for the Cougars it is just a cramping issue. 41 and a half seconds. 78-71, WPI in front. Here's Gremski. Pisacreta, Gremski, good defense for WPI. Making Clark really work for it, take a lot of clock. Converse, no good. Todd, the rebound. Now, huge and rebound. WPI can run it out now. Davern going to reach in and foul, and Needleman will go to the line and shoot a one and one with 21 and a half seconds remaining.
Well, I'll tell you one thing, Kevin. This game was never out of reach. Uh, it no. was a bond burn, a back and forth here. Needleman hits the front end of the one and one. So it's an eight point lead with 21 and a half seconds to play. Great defense though, that last trip down by WPI. They made Clark use so much clock. Dakota, Dakota Wheeler in the ball game, giving WPI a little bit of size inside. Here's Pisacreta. 19 seconds remaining in the game. Pisacreta on the run, kicks it to Converse. Now it's Gremski for three, buries it. Anthony Gremski with his fifth three-pointer of the night. I don't know that he's missed. He may be five for five from three-point range. Well, uh, great job reversing the basketball, and again, What a big, big shot here for Clark. Six point advantage for WPI. Kremski with five threes tonight, 15 points. You look at the offense put up, 80 points by WPI, 74 points by Clark. 13 seconds remaining, six point game, so Clark's gonna need a miracle. I mean, they're gonna need a steal and a three, steal and a three. If you're WPI, you're just trying to get it in, get it to your, your good hands, guys, and your good free throw shooters. Let them take the foul and go to the line. Yeah, spread the floor, go to open space, make sure you come and catch the basketball. Don't stand there and wait for it to get to you. You know, crucial time of the game where you've got to make sure that all your fundamentals are demonstrated. Pico game and back in the ball game for Clark. They'll contest the inbounds. Everyone's on a man. WPI wants a timeout. So they surveyed the defense and what Clark was going to do. They call a timeout. So they switch their strategy for the out of bounds play. Paul Phillips will switch his defense for the out-of-bounds play. It's a chess game, Mr. Shea. It's yep. a chess game. It is. It is. Thirteen seconds remaining. WPI with an 80 to 74 lead. WPI will put the ball in play. Don't be surprised to see someone from Clark as they go man to man full pressure, looking to draw the charge on a push off. Might be a little acting involved, but that certainly is something I'd be doing right now, down by six with only 13.1 on the clock. Wisniewski, Rogers would be the, the two you would think that they would be looking for. You're thinking it's a Wisniewski or Rogers here. We'll see. Believe it or not, free throw shooting has been one of the Achilles heels for WPI this season. Now, they've shot well tonight from the line, but Rogers a 55% free throw shooter. Wisniewski, 67%. Needleman's a 75% free throw shooter. Aaron Todd is an 82% free throw shooter. So do they go to one of those guys? Needleman. Needleman is fouled. He's a 75% free throw shooter. So he will go to the line and shoot two. It's a 10 right. team foul. Eleven point eight seconds remaining in the ball game. Six point lead for WPI. A freshman Needleman, 75% free throw shooter. Chris Bartley going uh, big on the defensive end, guard laden on the offensive end. Needleman hits the first. 
It's a big one. That's a seven point lead now. So now you're talking about a three possession game. Even, you know, I mean, coaches get nervous and they're always thinking, well, what if this, what if this scenario? Seven points with 11 seconds, eight points with 11 seconds. You've put this one to bed. Big free throws right there. Here's Kremski. Kremski up the court. Kremski three steps over half court. No good. Last touched by Clark. Converse was battling for the rebound. It'll be WPI ball with four and a half seconds to play. 82-74 lead for WPI. Clark's going to defend the inbound. And Doherty's just going to hold the ball. And WPI will win their 16th straight in this rivalry. 82 to 74. Hard fought victory in a, another entertaining game between these two city rivals. Friday night, we will be at Doherty High School. The Highlanders taking on St. John's, the top 10 matchup. Should be a good one. We'll tip that one off at 7 o'clock. For our producer, director, Sean Grady, for Kevin Wells and our entire Charter TV3 crew. I'm Kevin Shea. Thanks for watching. So long from the Neller Center, WPI victorious tonight in this crosstown rivalry.